Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. August 28th, my birthday at 11.45 p.m. Mountain Time. Arctic sea ice, still 5,000 cubic kilometers at the end of melt season. But the big story, facing Laura's devastation is like a bad science fiction novel, Mayor says, while 600,000 still lack power. Keep calm. It's boom time. Let's check power out of U.S. first, and we can see 100,000 in Texas still out of power. Louisiana approaching half a million customers without power. And those are the numbers right there. Top areas by outages, 445,000 in Louisiana, 92,000 in Texas, 37,000 in Michigan, and so on and so forth. Let's get on with the Lara footage or the devastation, shall we say. Before and after satellite images show widespread uh, destruction from Laura, and there you have it, widespread. Real quick, we'll show you some before and after pictures here of a farm. Wow, 50% loss there. Completely lost, building gone, building gone, 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 gone. Now, I thought it would be much worse than this, so that is some good news. Based on the pictures coming out before, after total loss there the total loss region was a very small pocket now here's the power now power before <laughs> power now so you could see this rural region in the center hard hit and very dark currently those are the facts and our prayers go out to those suffering laura's death toll rises to at least 14 Threatens tornadoes, heavy rain after damage in Texas and Louisiana. And we'll get to that. But now there is northeast headlines. Active transition to the weekend. Two storm systems approach. Spotty strong storms Friday. Greater concern Saturday for the I-95 corridor. Gusty thunderstorms, flash flooding, and isolated tornadoes. Now fatalities from Hurricane Laura rose to at least 14 as the storm, now tropical depression, Laura, dumped heavy rain across the deep south Friday and threatened to spin off deadly tornadoes as it turned eastward. There I am. Happy birthday to me. 49 years young. The National Hurricane Center warned of possible tornadoes Friday afternoon and evening across parts of the Mid-South and Tennessee Valley regions. I haven't been able to find any. Or a tornado watch was posted for portions of Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi as well. A day after the Cat 4 storm hit, more bodies emerged in the aftermath in Louisiana and neighboring Texas, as we, we thought. The deaths included five people killed by fallen trees, one person who drowned in a boat, eight people died from carbon monoxide poisoning due to unsafe operations of generators, including three inside a Texas pool hall where authorities say the owner had let seven Vietnamese shrimp boat laborers and a homeless man take shelter. The other four were in critical condition. Ah, oh, what a way to go. Laura was also expected to dump up to five inches of rain in parts of the region from Arkansas to central Kentucky on Friday. It was also threatening to bring flash floods across portions of central and southern Appalachia through Saturday, and we'll get to those numbers in just a second. Flash flood warnings for parts of the immediate area after multiple rounds of storms. Now we'll look at the National Weather Service map. Laura slowly losing tropical characteristics according to weather.gov. And the, we are Weather Ready Nation ambassadors. But you can see that the flash flood warnings and watches are very limited regions here. So click on your county or your region to get updates. The big picture is huge Red flag warnings throughout much of the Northwest, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, all of Western Montana, Washington State and Oregon as well. And this could stoke more fires. Now, we just had some weather systems move through here and some rain in Colorado and California help quelch and contain some of the biggest fires in recorded history, including one of the fires in Colorado that just exceeded and has become the largest fire in recorded history. I believe it's the Pine Gulch fire. Uh, thankfully, about 80% contained, which means it's contained. So, heavy rain and flash flooding expected in the central Appalachians. Several storms with tornadoes, damaging winds are likely from the Carolinas to the Mid-Atlantic and New England. As the remnants of Laura get absorbed by a front, 
and move off the mid-Atlantic coast sometime in the coming days. Now let's get to the cooling. Cold front coming to the west, which is the best, bringing the first snow of the season at the end of August. And yes, in the middle of summer, it will be a bummer. Unless you're in the high country and you like to do a little boogieing around in the snow. North America's Arctic cool down. Temps to sink well below average. The high tomorrow here is 73. Now, it's more like 90 usually, but a string of cold fronts are expected to engulf much of the North American continent starting Friday, bringing well below average temperatures. Scattered thunderstorms and even summer snow to some mountain states. Now, I didn't believe this when I read Cap's article. I was like, are you kidding me? Of course not. The new GFS updated model shows in the next 48 hours snow in Colorado in the high country, Wyoming, Montana, and a big swath. Yes. Take a look, Alberta. Western Alberta is going to get the boom. And then it's actually... Take a look. Western Alberta gets a boom in the next day or so, and then a second boom in the first week of September. So we're going to be tracking that storm as New Zealand South Island is treated to stunning low-level snow with another significant snow event arriving next Tuesday. Parts of New Zealand South Island were treated to a stunning frosted mountain this week after a good dump of snow-blasted northern areas. And looking ahead, another significant snow event is expected early next week. Now, the side of snow in the hills towards Picton and the Richmond Ranges was just stunning, said Bletcham, local Pam Wood. I was thinking, my goodness, that's something I've never seen before and I doubt I'll ever see for a very long time, said Wood. We've obviously seen dustings on Mount Roberts and dustings on Mount Riley and around the Richmond Ranges, but I've never seen it down low above Havelock like that. Who knew that it was still going to snow like never before? Well, come over and check out the Arctic ice, which was supposed to be gone a decade ago, and you can see 5,000 cubic kilometers still existing at the end of melt season which is in the multi-decadal norm based on all numbers that have ever been recorded. So there's that. <laughs> Boom! Let's go to Greenland, where we had record, yes, four, five, six, six gigaton gain during melt season. Yes, and it was just two weeks ago, and not a pip from the mainstream. This six gigaton rise was double the largest ice gain ever in the first week of August in recorded history. The largest ice gain in recorded history, doubling the former record, not reported by a single person. I did. And again, more epic ice gains at the end of August, which is still considered the melt season. So it is going to be a boom of a year for Greenland. Hurricane Laura was strong enough to reverse the flow of the Mississippi River. Do you remember the last time that happened was the New Madrid fault, I think. Am I missing something? Let's check out Laura's current position. Tropical Depression Laura sitting right there between Illinois and Indiana and Kentucky, right on the trifecta. It's moving east. Now it's breaking up because it's experiencing shear, but sustained winds at 30 miles per hour will make wreak havoc in this region. And that's all we're going to really be talking about, Laura, until it reaches the coast. Now, new confirmation that climate models overstate atmospheric warming is good news because that's what we've been telling you for almost four years now. Let's talk a little bit about space weather. We just came off of a quick geomagnetic storm at the lowest level for three hours just nine hours ago. And that was because of a coronal hole stream that we experienced right here. Look at the Discover Solar Wind, top left. This quick shift in the BZ, followed by a phi angle tizzy, all associated with this density increase and subsequent plasma wind stream increase, led to this quick three hours of geomagnetic instability, which could have led to perturbations to cell phones and other systems, which rely on satellite telemetry, of course. Now, let's talk about a little bit of the facts of solar cycle 24 and 25. It can now be determined exactly the flexure point between the two cycles. 
First, I'm going to show you daily solar wind at Soho, which is at solin.info. And we're going to be looking at solar wind speed and density. And the perturbation I want to bring your eye to is this double peak here in the middle of this flat line. This continuous flat line is the lowest solar wind activity in a decade. And this would, this region here would be indicative of the transition from solar cycle 24 on the left to 25 on the right. But we still have to determine an exact spot and it is this double peak in the middle. And I will show you why. Because this correlates to the electron fluence uh, graph here. Uh, this is the same line. This same flat line at the bottom here would be the same flat line as this line in correlation only. And this reverse W corresponds to June 8th. The reverse W here line is June 8th. And if we come over to the positive M which would be a W the other way, and we just come down here, we're going to see that that's June 8th. So here's June 8th, and we'll just take it up, and that brings us right to the M. And that is the exact flexure point between solar cycle 24 to the left and 25 to the right. And it's just based on different characteristics of different telemetry products that we have to look at just like grand solar minimums. And a new editorial paper coming out from Zarkova on the 4th of August suggests that on June 8th, 2020, we entered the grand solar minimum, according to her, <coughs> which will last for quite some time. I'm going to do a whole paper on this and break it down using some of my style and her information. But quickly, I'll read you a little piece in this editorial, I will demonstrate with newly discovered solar activity proxy magnetic field that the sun has entered into the modern grand solar minimum 2020 to 2053. That will lead to significant reduction in solar magnetic field and activity like during the Maunder minimum. Now, why is this important? Well, the reduction of terrestrial temperature during the next 30 years can have important implications for different parts of the planet on growing vegetation, agriculture, food supplies, and heating needs, both in the northern and southern hemispheres. And this is coming after a global pandemic, which has already crushed the financials. Now, I know the stock market is up, but inflation is coming. The Fed has flooded trillions of dollars into the hands of people. And this is bad news for the future of humanity. Bad things are coming. But I'm in a good position, so I'm not worried. Neither should you be worried about a 56-year-old NASA satellite expected to fall to Earth this weekend. You know why? Because it's as big as the rock. It's also going to hit right before the election. Neither of which will ever reach the surface. Then this is standard protocol for NASA. They can base the size, direction, and entry angle and they could determine if it's going to burn up way up, up in the atmosphere, in the ionosphere even. And that's what this baby's going to do. Either It's happening right now. If you, if you want to know more details, take a look at the article, which is not a article. Now, Saturn, Jupiter, and the moon will form a triangle in the sky. This is not an Illuminati sign. This is a triangle. <laughs> this weekend. And you know how to see it? It's actually right now. So go the fuck out there. Look up by the moon. That's a boom. It's a moon boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. It started snowing in the mountains in August, which is pretty normal. But we were told there was going to be no more snow, no more Arctic ice 10 years ago. And it's in multi-decadal norms and building. Greenland's building record ice in the middle of the melt season. And someone is lying. Be safe. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to all of our new Patreons that stood up. And happy birthday to me.
share this video with like-minded people. And get out, get out there and take your fucking mask off for fuck's sake.